Hello everybody. Today we're going to take a look at building the Neutrik NE8 MX6-B Ethercon connector, which is about the most hateful Ethercon connector to build out of all of them. They're not super fun, um, especially when you're using a tactical cat cable. Um, which is what we're doing today. So this is a uh, pre-built cable. Um, I've got another one that, uh, that I, I just have a, a scrap cable laying around, so I figured I would just show you how to build this. So um, this is uh, Belden Data Tough cable. Uh, this is the, the cable that I like to use in, in harsh and tactical environments. Um, in, in the entertainment world, this is pretty standard for um, snakes over AES-50 protocol or, or anything that um, is, is entertainment grade. So uh, the first tool that you're going to need is a um, network cable stripper. God, Messy Desk Productions is in full business today. Um, apologize about the messy desk. I'm in the middle of a couple of builds at the moment. Um, so just we'll take this, we'll strip it. Take this back. It just, just comes apart just like that. Um, here's our outer shell, which is which is nice and nice and thick. Um, and then on the inside of, of tactical cat you do have a foil shield so i like to pull the shield back and i usually just take my flush cutters and trim that and then here's my uh, drain wire my ground wire i'll just peel that back um and then actually you know what i'm gonna pop this back a little bit more So when you're building these, the the tricky thing about them is um, with Neutrik connectors, both XLR or, or most Neutrik kind of connectors, they have this little back piece. This is the cord grip, and this goes into the boot just like this, and this is what, what holds everything square. So this pushes against the connector assembly in here, and it grips the cable, and it's just a, it's just a strain relief chuck. I think that's what Neutra calls it. But when you start to get into thick cables, like this, this cable is at least a quarter of an inch in diameter. Um, th that's right at the edge of what the strain relief can handle, and it just makes building the connector kind of hard. So um, I am just, uh, twisting the uh, shield or the ground wire, the drain wire, if you're talking in cable speak. So I'm just going to take this and zip this around real fast to just take this inner shield off. Okay, we're going to get our little pull wire out of here. Um, and then when we build this, we're going to put our, our boot on which I should have done before I stripped this cable back. Learn from my mistakes, please don't do that. I'm gonna put this on. I'm gonna put our strain relief chuck on. Um, the strain relief chuck is actually split in the middle, so if you don't, you can not put it on right now. It's just a good habit to get into. Um, I'm gonna flip my pairs out. Take out my center divider. Now, for Tactical Cat, I made a video previously showing the difference between Cat 5, Cat 6, and Tactical Cat. Um, I'm going to link that video, and then I'm also going to, so that you can just see, I had the cable pulled apart in that video, um, but this is, this is how you do it. So, um, these twisted pairs are molded together in the center. They're extruded in one, one piece of plastic or rubber or whatever this is. Um, versus a regular uh, cat cable that all the pairs are twisted, but they're not mated. So this this part is a bit of a challenge to uh, get off. So what you want to do is just get it so that they're straight like this. So once these are straight, you take a utility knife and you very carefully find the center of the two cables right at the top and then you just push your knife into it 
and pull the cable through it. Okay. And once you do that, you take your fingernail, split them, and then just pull them apart. Now, once these are apart, you want to inspect each conductor just to make sure that you didn't pull the, any of the shielding off or the, um, the jacketing off, the insulation on the outside. You want to make sure that you're not seeing any bare copper um, along the middle portion of the wire. If you do, if you do see bare copper, um, you uh, need to start over because you'll get crosstalk. So the way that this comes assembled is you have a couple of pieces. You have the shell, you have this little crimp guy at the back, and then you have the actual RJ that's in here. So um, this piece comes assembled from the factory with this little black plastic uh, piece on it. This is actually just a holder, so you need to take it off. It's not going to fit into the, uh, into the connector. So if you look at this little PCB right here, you can see these top terminals like this. Um, and if you look inside the uh, RJ jacket, you can see the the RJ terminals that are facing down. So you just need to put you need to build the cable so that this uh, goes in here just like this. Um, so one of the cool things that Neutrik did to help you um, is that these little plastic pieces on here only go one way, so you can't really build the cable wrong. But before you take these apart. Um, you flip this little black plastic piece around and you insert, well, first you drop it, then you insert uh, into the black piece as a holder. And this, this helps you build the cable um, correctly. So um, if you're looking at this, you, uh, you look at the top of the plastic thing. This is 1287, 1287, and on the other side it says... Um, 5463, 5463. Um, so if you're building this to the B standard, which most people do, um, it gives you the color, co the color code right at the bottom. So you just need to read this right at the bottom. Just make sure you guys can see this. Um, so what I like to do is just pull these little white parts off. And then you'll notice that this exposes some, some fins here that are through the PCB. We'll just set this off to the side. Um, and then you just match up your colors. So we start with um, we start with um, orange and brown. So I kind of like to get everything relatively close to the way that they're going to end up before we insert them. And then this is uh, blue stripe, blue. Sometimes it wants to mess with you and sometimes it doesn't. So, um, okay. So we are just going to say this is orange stripe orange. Brown stripe. Or brown. And then brown stripe. And then if you can just kind of find the way the cable wants to lay, it's going to be okay. You know what, I'm feeling uh, gutsy. I'm gonna take this piece of heat shrink off. I may regret this decision, we'll see. But I think we're gonna be okay with this, just looking at it. I think that heat shrink is gonna be more of a problem than a help. Okay. Got that guy in, and now we'll just load this. Blue stripe. So you can sort of twist these so that they're out of the way. Um, so now what you want to do is you want to take your little cassette and you can start with the top. Now this is the important part here. Uh, these find their way in, but you don't want to push them in too hard that, that crimps. Because you can, you still want to seat the cables um, so that they're in a nice way, and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. Okay. All right. So now you can pull that off. 
We'll double check our wiring one more time. Okay, so if you're looking at this, you can still kind of move this assembly around because you haven't uh, punctured the, the wires yet. So I just like to snug that up. And then once I'm good, I just with my hands crimp these down. Um, and I find that a pair of vice grips work really well as pliers because that's what's on my workbench right now. They do make, I believe that they do make a, a, a cat crimp tool for this. I, I remember reading it in the instruction manual and thinking to myself, I don't know what that tool is um, that is specifically for this task of flattening um, flattening uh, cat lines, but I'm sure Neutrik makes it and I'm sure it's $300. Um, so if you just take a set of, of flush cutters, uh, you can go in here and just trim these off like this. Okay. Now, um, you want to take your, your ground wire and just wrap it. You just want to wrap it around the, uh, the inner jacketing like this. Okay. And now you're just going to insert this part just like this. Just making sure that the leads on the PCB are matching the leads in the chassis and then that'll go in just like that um, and here is one of the tricky parts of this connector is this little back boot um, it just doesn't want to stay together it just friction fits together and I've tried taping these um, I suppose you could probably uh, put just a little dab of glue in there a little super glue but I'm always afraid to, to do that. So you have to mate these two pieces together, which I'm glad is struggling because I'm guessing if you're watching the video, you may also be struggling. So it's not very easy for me either. So peel our shielding back just a little bit to get better contact. You know, you have to you have to make the shielding come in contact with the outer jacket of the RJ, which is this piece's job. Okay, so once you've got it together, it's gonna fall apart. <laughs> okay. You can kind of just push it in and then you sort of spin it. And you can just find where it wants to lock in. And it'll lock just like that. Um, now, the tricky part is you don't want to let this go because you don't want to repeat that process again. So um, look for the Neutrik logo on the boot. And we're just going to very gently insert this in here. And you got to push pretty hard to get that in there. Now, be careful because this metal clam shell part at the end will fall apart. So just be warned. Um, I'm glad I took the heat shrink off. <laughs> it fell apart. <laughs> just like I said it would. Okay. Put this guy on, which I regret not putting on. Again, just learn from my mistakes. I'm very gently going to put that on. Okay. I slide this up. You just because it's it needs kind of wrestled. Okay. And then there you go. It's built. So I've got a little radial box. I always like to check the cables um, in something that has some type of recessed um, portion just to make sure that it seats square, and it does. 
So, all right, that's how you build the N8MX6. If you have any questions, please just drop a comment below. Thanks for stopping by.